Hi, this is Anne, one of the librarians for the Technical Services Department at your Baltimore County Public Library. Today, we are going to talk about exploring nature. After spending many weeks inside, I hope you're able to get some outdoor time. Walking around your block, your neighborhood, taking hikes, maybe visiting some parks uh, during some non-busy hours. While you're enjoying some fresh air, I hope you take this opportunity to get curious and discover your local flora and fauna, which is just the fancy way of saying plant life and animals. In this video, I hope to give you tips and advice on how to get started your nature exploration. I'm going to suggest some basic tools that will be helpful in logging your observations. And I'm also going to mention some ebooks, some electronic resources available from us, BCPL, that will deepen your learning, as well as some free apps um, you can download for even more information. So let's get started. Okay, before you go, here are some preparation suggestions. How are you going to be keeping track of your findings? Are you going to just keep a paper and pencil log, um, maybe taking notes and drawing or sketching what you see? Or are you gonna take a camera to take photographs of what you're curious about? Or do you have something that can do both? Maybe a phone, a smartphone that you can snap pictures with and take some um, digital notes with. So think about that because you wanna be able to remember what you see. Think about what the weather is gonna be like that day. What are you going to wear? You know, I suggest wearing something really comfortable. Um, I also re recommend wearing a hat if it's gonna be sunny. Uh, to keep you cool, but also if it's going to be sunny, some sunscreen to put on and some comfortable shoes. Now, that might sound silly. I'm telling you to wear shoes when you're going outdoors and maybe you want to enjoy the, the grass between your toes or whatever. But if you're really going to be serious about walking around, you don't want to do a couple things. One, you don't want to accidentally step on a bee and get stung. That happens more than you might think or you might end up on an anthill and having lots of ants crawling on your bare skin. I've had it happen to me, it's, it's not that fun. So having some comfortable shoes and socks just gives you an extra level of protection against potentially stepping on some things. Oh, and bug repellent. And also you might say, well, I'm specifically going on this hike to go observe insects. Why do I need bug repellent, insect repellent? Well, um, you know, if you're allergic to some things that may be a nuisance, it's handy to have, like mosquito bites. But more importantly, get a insect rep an insect repellent that will repel ticks. Um, really seriously, uh, ticks, specifically deer ticks, which are tiny. They are, they say the size of strawberry seeds, uh, transmit Lyme's disease, which, you know, is uh, very problematic. So a couple of things you want to make sure you get that insect repellent, and that you can identify the different kinds of ticks that we have in our area or where you're going to be walking around. And always, always do a tick check anytime you've been outside after you come in. So some people even say, um, some naturalists say that it's important to do a tick check on yourself even if you've just been in your yard. Maybe you've taken the dog for a walk and then you come back inside. Just always do a tick scan. Um, true story. <laughs> Um, I went outside for a walk, came back inside, and I thought, okay, I'll be fine after I take a shower, right? The shower is gonna rinse off all bugs from me. Uh, so when I was in the shower, I was washing behind my ear, and I was touching, and I was like, why is the part where my finger is touching my skin? I can't feel it. And then I pulled, and there was a huge dog tick. So gross. <laughs> uh, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies. So um, you might not even feel the tick on you. Like I said, that deer tick is so small. The dog tick is much bigger, um, but I still didn't feel it. So always do a tick check, be able to identify the differences in how the different uh, ticks look and appear, um, and head to toe from your feet, your ankles, all the way up to your scalp and behind your ears. So please do a tick check. Okay, um, so that's it on getting started. Now, where are we gonna go? Where is nature? 
So even if you can't go far, you'll hopefully find nature somewhere outside of your home, even nearby. Maybe there's a grove of trees or a garden nearby you can visit. Um, or even if you are still and quiet enough, your own balcony, porch, or window might be fine and something of nature might come to you, might pass by, or you can observe um, just as close as your own window. If you are lucky enough to visit a trail or a park or some kind of nearby body of water, you are likely gonna find some critter or plant life you might get curious about. You might have your own favorite local spot, but in general, Baltimore County and Maryland in general has some great natural locations um, and state parks that you can visit. So you might wanna check out the Gunpowder, Gunpowder Falls, North Point State Park, Hart Miller Island, um, maybe the Lock, Resin, Lock Raven Reservoir, NCR Trail. That's just a couple of ideas um, to get started. And, or you can find something nearby closer to you. Okay, so you found something or you found a bunch of stuff. Now, how are we going to ID what you've seen? How are we gonna identify what you, you don't know what, exactly what it is, but you wanna know. Once you found something that you wanna learn more about, and it could be a flower, a tree, fungus, mushroom, insect, animal, bird. You can use guidebooks, nature websites, or apps to properly identify what you've observed, your collection. These resources can tell you if what you've seen is common or rare in your area, um, what times of years you can typically find them, if they are introduced or are native to our area if they're beneficial or harmful to our native environment, and even if they are potentially poisonous or venomous. So that's, all that stuff is pretty cool, I think. Here's a list of some great ebook, electronic book, field guidebooks, field guides, that you can find in our BCPL online catalog. The first one I have is a birding, birding book. It's called Sibley's Birding Basics, and that's by David Allen Sibley. The second one is Birds of North America, get them all. And that one's by Herbert S. Zim, Z-I-M. We also have one on trees, a tree guidebook. We have The Trees of North America by C. Frank Brockman. Uh, and we have another one on plants, um, The North American Guide to Common Poisonous Plants and Mushrooms. And that's by Nancy J. Turner and Patrick Von Attercass. So those are some really neat ebooks that we have available for you on bcpl.info. Um, all of them recommend to be viewed on some sort of color device. So hopefully you have a smartphone or a tablet that you can view it in color. That's their recommendation. Because when you're looking through the guidebooks, it's gonna have color photographs for you to compare. Okay, so now if you have a smartphone or a smart device, here are some apps that I recommend um, and that I've been using. Uh, Seek, S-E-E-K, is a free app developed by the makers of the iNaturalist app. They are, these are the, the developers are from the California Academy of Sciences and National Geographic, and they use community and crowdsourced information to make plant and animal identifications. You simply share your pictures, the pictures that you've taken of your subject, uh, and Seek will provide a suggestion of similar appearing plants or animals curated by these experts and other observers. You can definitely also check out the iNaturalist app for a more robust version of the Seek app. Uh, or if you just want to be more involved with the sharing community rather than just independent observation. I, tr I use both. Um, I like to see both, but Seek is definitely like more the simpler one. And iNaturalist, like I said, is a more robust um, more potential suggestions. It gives you an opportunity to share where you've seen it. If you want to turn on your locations, I turn off my location and I don't share. <laughs> so it's up to you. You can either use it to um, be part of the community or sort of as, as an observer. Um, I also just rec um, downloaded the Audubon app for myself and Audubon, known for their um, bird expertise. This is a really neat bird identification app. You don't actually need a photograph. You just need to remember what you saw. 
Uh, so no pictures are necessary. You just pick your state, the state where you saw the bird, the time of year, the month, um, and it will go through a series of questions that you get to choose which best describes the bird that you saw, color, that's in size, that sort of thing. And again, they will give you a list of best descriptions that fit uh, what you've inputted it, with photographs. So you can, so this happened to me. I saw a bluebird and I thought, that looks like an indigo bunting. Like, what do I know about birds? <laughs> and then I did the, the Audubon uh, list through and it turns out it was actually an Eastern bluebird when I looked at the photo, I saw the, the difference in the color of the body of the bird. And I was like, okay, that's definitely it. I was wrong, this is right, that's, cool. that's so cool. Okay, <laughs> so I, those are some, some apps and free eBooks that I want you to check out to get started. Uh, if you have more, that's awesome. And you know, I definitely encourage you to explore what can help you explore nature. Um, I hope this information helps get you started on your exploration. Please be sure to check out more video programs like this one that explore books and ideas on our Baltimore County Public Library uh, website, bcpl.info, or check out our Facebook page for more programs. Um, I wanna thank you for joining me, but before we go, I was gonna leave you with some of the findings um, I've seen just around my house in the past few weeks. First of all, this is a tent caterpillar, which is very common in the area, and you probably know them as those uh, caterpillars that make those big white tent nests in trees, and they just come out in droves. So that was one of my first early sightings. I had this small tree that I didn't know what it was, and iNaturalist is awesome because all you have to do is just take a picture of the leaves. Um, it does. It does recommend that you take multiple photos so you can do different comparisons um, and then they'll populate their suggestions list. But, you know, just a simple picture like this told me that what I was looking at is a hickory tree sapling. This one here, uh, again, I was just taking photos of the leaves and I thought this was a tree. I was wrong. This is a vine. This is a bittersweet vine. So something you think they might be looking at might be something totally different and just tricking you by the nature of its biology uh, in our environment. This is a beautiful yellow iris, but you might want to find out more about this because it's interesting. Like you, you can go on these apps and the guidebooks will t say different things. They might just tell you about the, the, um, the flower or the plant, but some will tell you, you know, some people consider this a weed, this is invasive, da 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 da. So even if something beautiful like this might be problematic to some people, and that's always interesting to find out. Okay, like this, it's kind of a, this was a bummer. These are, these little black bugs, I had a bad feeling about this. This, I didn't have to go far for this. There, there was a tr an army of these on my door, <laughs> just trailing up from a crack near the bottom, making their little army way up, and they're termites. So, that was a bummer for me to find out. Uh, this one, not such a bummer. I love turtles. Turtles, you know, are near my area. I do live near a creek, and I got to find out that this is considered an uh, emmy, emmy dean or emmy dean. This is a box turtle. Oh, and again, uh, when you are stepping out into nature, step lightly, because this turtle did not make a sound, and I was just going through the woods. I almost stepped on this thing. You know, it, did, it didn't hear me. I was sleeping, so he didn't hear me coming. It didn't hear me coming, uh, and I could have, I could have kicked it. So it's, it's step lightly in nature and just be slow and uh, take a take a good look of what's around you. The, and here is a toad. This is an American toad. <laughs> um, I love toads. If you are interested in gardening, that's a, another great way to really observe nature up close and you, you know, things might come out that are unexpected because you might be just digging in a plot of dirt uh, and bugs and toads will come up. So this guy came up when I was um, digging around in my garden. And last I have this I'm not familiar with so many bugs and insects, and I saw this 
uh, just relaxing on a rainy day on a peony bloom, again, in my front yard, and I was a little scared because there are those stories out right now about this murderous hornet that is on the west coast. You can read more about that. I, I need to educate myself more about that terrible hornet. This is a regular hornet. I don't think it is the murdering kind. I can find out more about it. All I found out was that it is in, it is in the hornet family. It was about three inches long. It was so big. Um, and it didn't, I didn't bother it. It didn't bother me. Um, like, it, you, like you can see in this photograph, it's just chilling in the rain on a flower in the middle of Maryland. So have fun, have fun out in nature, have fun exploring, um, have a good time, and thanks for joining me.